ShireSociety.com. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly report. William Crystal knows what is wrong with the United States. As he wrote recently in the flagship magazine of the neoconservatives, the Weekly Standard, the problem with the U.S. is that we seem to have lost our appetite for war. According to Crystal, the troubles that have befallen us in the 20th century have all been the result of these periodic bouts of war weariness, a kind of virus that we catch from time to time. He claims because of the U.S. drawdown in Europe after World War II, Stalin subjugated Eastern Europe. Because of war weariness, the United States stopped bombing Southeast Asia in the 1970s, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. War weariness through the 1990s led to Rwanda, Milosevic, and the rise of the Taliban. It was our fault for not fighting on. According to Crystal, our failure to act as the policemen of the world is why we were attacked on September 11, 2001. Of the 1990s, he wrote, that decade of not policing the world ended with 9-11. That revisionism is too much even for fellow neoconservatives like Paul Wolfowitz to swallow. In a 2003 interview, Wolfowitz admitted that it was the presence of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia that led to the growth of al-Qaeda. Quote, we can now remove almost all our forces from Saudi Arabia. Their presence there over the last 12 years has been a source of enormous difficulty for a friendly government. It's been a huge recruiting device for al-Qaeda. In fact, if you look at bin Laden, one of his principal grievances was the presence of so-called crusader forces on the Holy Land, Mecca and Medina, close quote. But for Crystal and his allies, there is never enough war. According to a new study by Brown University, the U.S. invasion of Iraq cost some 190,000 lives, most of them non-combatants. It has cost more than $1.7 trillion, and when all is said and done, including interest, the cost will well be over $6 trillion. Some $212 billion was spent on Iraq reconstruction with nothing to show for it. Total deaths from the U.S. war on Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan have been at least 329,000. None of this is enough for Crystal. The neocon ideology promotes endless war, but neocons fight their battles with the blood of others. From the comfortable subsidized offices of magazines like the Weekly Standard, the neoconservatives urge the United States to engage in endless war, to be fought by the victims of poverty draft from states where there are few jobs. Ironically, these young people cannot find more productive work because the Federal Reserve's endless money printing to keep the war machine turning has destroyed our economy. The $6 trillion that will be spent on the Iraq war are merely pieces of printed paper that further erodes the dollar's purchasing power now and well into the future. It is the inflation tax which is the most regressive and cruel of all. Yes, Americans are war-weary, concedes Crystal, but he does not blame the average American. The real problem is that the president has dropped the ball on terrifying Americans with the lies and imaginary threats that led to the invasion of Iraq. Writes Crystal, quote, One can't, for example, be surprised at the ebbing support of the American public for war in Afghanistan years after the president stopped trying to mobilize their support. Stop heralding the successes of the troops he had sent there and stop explaining the importance of their mission, close quote. If only we had more war propaganda from the highest level of government, we could be cured of this war weariness. Ten years ago, the U.S. invaded Iraq under the influence of neoconservative lies. Those lies continue to promote U.S. military actions in places like Libya, and next on their agenda is Syria, and then on to Iran. It's time for the American people to shout, enough. Thanks for calling this update. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday. The written text can be found on my free foundation website at www.the-free-foundation.org and on my Facebook page. Thanks for calling. The old world is collapsing. And it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.
www.cloudformation.com.